All right, guys. Our next guest is still just coming off a win over Darren Till, but he's already set to take on Jared Cannonier. It looks like at UFC 254 in October. He is kind enough to join us straight from the dip, chip, and doom palace itself. He's got he's in the gaming chair right now. Robert Whitaker, welcome back to the show. How are you, man? Good, mate. Good. It's good to be back. Dude, we love having you on the program. Let's quickly touch on the ISO that you went through. It's pretty surreal. You come back from a fight, and there you are. you got to go into lockdown for a little bit at the hotel. Tell us, how was it, man? I know you like to chill out and get an opportunity to play some games. Was it good to do that without any interruptions? And I saw there was some uh, Doritos and salsa dipping going on as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> I guess, like, honestly, it wasn't that bad because personality-wise, it suits me quite fine. It's just <laughs> the amount of time I was away from my family was really starting to eat up. I mean, I'm, I'm good at distracting myself. So I kept myself distracted when I was in Abu Dhabi. kept myself distracted when I first got back. But that last week, I could just really feel the, you know, the heartstrings going for the family. Mm. How did you, you take your mind off it? What, what did you do while you were in ISO? I imagine that, that first part's great. And then towards the end, you're like, <laughs> probably had enough of this. You know, I just, yeah, I just kept myself busy with uh, with games, food, and, and, and trying to learn the guitar. Is that is that the guitar in the back there that you were trying to learn? Or I thought it was a ukulele for a second, but I guess the distance makes it a guitar. What kind of songs yeah, are you trying to learn? Yeah, just, well, oh, just any, any, any songs. <laughs> I'm I'm fresh beginner, so. Any chance you can strum a tune for us, Rob? There is zero chance. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that. <laughs> Dude, I was, was going to say, actually, while we talk about music, um, we've had a few fans um, hit us up along on Instagram. And uh, just a few just wondering about your walkout song and sort of what it means to you. Obviously, you just can't be touched by Roy Jones Jr. quite a bit. And I know that one time you used Cold Chisel as well. Um, what goes into sort of picking that Roy Jones Jr. song for you? And uh, what does this what what does it kind of mean to you? Well, I guess the the my last walkout song, the Roy Jones uh, Jones Junior song, that was, that's a song that I've been walking out to since the the beginning of my career, right? And uh, for one, I think it's just really cool. You know, I like the lyrics. I like I like the idea you can't be touched. I like I like that unstoppable force sort of thing. Um, I guess and. <laughs> And funny enough, the two times I've changed my walkout song, I've lost both times. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, so there might be some sort of you know, superstition, superstition there. Uh, but I changed it back just because one, I, I, I do like the song, and and that's I've kind of because I've been using it for so long, I've created that that walkout as as my thing, you know. And and and, and two, I guess it was more symbolic for me this way. It's just to to come back to my roots, you know, to come back to square one to start again, and you got to start again is, is how it all began, right? Yeah, and also, obviously, Roy Jones Jr. is a bit of a legend. Are you, are you a fan of his? I mean, the guy's a boxing legend. He's coming yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When, when, when I was a teenager, yeah, for sure. You're going to keep an eye on that fight when it goes down in November? The <laughs> Roy uh, Jones Jr., Mike Tyson. It's hard. it's hard. I don't want to see those two fight. They're both legends of the game. I don't want to see them yeah. fight now when they're not at their peak, you know, because everyone still has them, like, in their head. I don't know. I was whatever mm, it's crazy also with tyson and, and uh you know it's a bit of a loose cannon so going in there you just never really know what to expect people are going to be like hey roy jones is using the robert whitaker uh mma walkout song <laughs> <laughs> i hope so that would be the best i, I, I was gonna say like it was kind of crazy seeing you in iso and then you see the reports that you're fighting jared cannonier and it's like this guy just won he's not even out of iso yet y you're not exactly messing around are you rob no nah, mate i wanted to get another fight in at the end of the year and uh you know, it's like 10 weeks away from, from this weekend, which is fine for me. You know, I, I had two weeks of just binging and playing <laughs> games till I fell over and ate until I was comatose. So why not? Why not? Everything's good. Everything's everything's great. Spoke to the coaches about it. And they're, they're like, if you're mentally happy to jump in, or just jump in. It. Mm. It's an interesting situation we're in right now as well from the perspective of, I suppose, if you want to fight, you got to kind of secure a spot on Fight Island too and make sure that there is a good spot for you all that time down the track. Are you sort of relieved that timing-wise it's kind of worked out quite well, that it looks like, you know, this thing will be over there at Fight Island, you'll be able to get another fight before the year the year finishes up? Yeah, that is certainly another thing. You know, I, I do consider myself blessed and lucky, and I thank the UFC for giving me the opportunity. Uh, I'm one of the lucky few that can still do their profession during this crazy time, especially as professional sports goes. And, um, you know, I was fortunate enough to get a fight in with, with, with Darren Till recently, and I'm fortunate enough to have another fight in, 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 in Fight Island confirmed and, and things like that. 
before the year's end because I wanted to fight fight again before the year's end so that I could slow things down around Christmas and just en enjoy that period. Mm. It's funny because uh, when when you beat Darren Till, you were like the bachelor. Everybody wanted a Rob Rose. Everybody <laughs> wanted you. You had Hermanson telling us that he that you were his yeah. number one preference. <clears throat> then there, yeah, Calvin Gastelum saying that you guys had unfinished business. How did you land on Cannoneer as the actual opponent, and how do you like him as an opponent? Honestly, I. I, I didn't care who I fought, <laughs> and I, that, that, I guess that's how I landed on him. It, it doesn't matter for me because the thing is, if, if if I'm right up here and up here, then I'll, I'll fight anybody any day. That's how I got to the title the first time. That's how I get it the second time. Um, I spoke to my uh, the corners and, and my manager and, and, and my coaches. They have more of a say on on that sort of stuff. So what they talk, how they talk to Mick and then to the UFC and the the dialogue between them is is. For them to know and like for them to work out, and then they they, they relay that to me. But because because when my coach when when I come something and says like when do you want to fight again, I like, fight anyone. Let's just get another one in before the end of the year, and mm -hmm. it makes it really easy for him to do his job. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pretty epic fight. Just uh, give us your thoughts on Jared and his sort of run in the middleweight division. A, a lot of fighters talking about the fact that this guy is one of the toughest dudes out there that's sort of around right now in the rankings. Yeah, mate. He he is a bit of a bit of a monster. He, he's hmm. tough. He's strong. He's resilient. He just comes forward and he just hits you with like that that aggression and power and and you know like he's kind of got that unstoppable momentum sort of thing going for him right now. Uh, the thing is though, I'm actually pretty good at monster slaying. <laughs> and I, 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 when I when I went through the division the first time, everyone was a monster. I carved through them and. You know, I, I respect his skill sets. I just think I'm better. I think I have the tool set to beat him, and I'm going to put that to the test. Yeah, and don't discount yourself. Slaying monsters in the cage and on Doom as well. A lifetime of that <laughs> goes goes a long way. But I, <laughs> I wonder, like, how does a, how does this kind of fight against, you know, a really explosive guy like Jared who comes forward very athletic compared to the one you had against Darren Till, where it was this mental chess match? Uh, where is what? As in, like, like, what, 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 what is the difference in terms of, like, uh, uh, yeah, like, like, I, I think you spoke about how I, grueling it was yeah, in, in a fight I, like that. How do you approach this one? I have a feeling this one's going to be much quicker. Mm. Yeah, we're going to go. We're, gonna, we're both going to go out there, and we're both aggressive guys. We're going to take it to each other, um, and we're going to see. We're going to see where the chips fall. You know, I guess though, I had a, I had a great game game plan with with Darren Till. You know, the, the game plan going in was just to use my entire skill set, be patient, and they got me across the line. I stuck to the game plan perfectly, and you know, hats off to my coaching staff for, for just making sure I stuck to it because I, I have a tendency to stray sometimes. But um, I think moving forward into the, the Canyon Air fight, I'm, I'm going to do the same thing. I have an entire skill set at my disposal. I think I'm better than him across the board. I can take this fight wherever I want. As long as I'm leading the dance, I think he's in a lot of trouble. Mm. You know, it's kind of a, a situation that reminds me a lot of you back when you were fighting guys like Jacques Ray and sort of fighting the toughest guys in the division. But the other thing that kind of reminds me of that time is, man, you really look like you're having a lot of fun in there. During fight <laughs> week, you're smiling right now. Mm. There's a different vibe about you. And you're just kind of enjoying the process. Would I be accurate in saying things uh, are a lot different now? Yeah, 100%. And I, and that's the biggest thing. I'm just enjoying the whole thing. That's why I jumped back into that fight straight away because... The, it wasn't it wasn't a drag i'm not dragging my feet i'm not forcing myself to get there i'm i'm just enjoying it all uh, cutting weight and and training up to the fight wasn't terrible it wasn't wasn't wrenching you know when when i was in actually there like cutting weight and doing everything there it wasn't terrible it was it was it was fun you know the obviously there's the stress and the pressures of the of the fight you're about to fight a guy on live tv around me, but but that's normal you know that's normal and it it's just so much fun and i'm enjoying it and i'm i'm, I'm just running with this man mm. i wonder cuz you spoke to us and said that you haven't really felt and fought like yourself since maybe the first romero fight uh, i wonder if <clears throat> excuse me in this Darren Till fight you felt like you were finally fighting like yourself and also when you took <clears throat> when you took time away and sort of you know had had a bit of a break it was a bit of a journey and i'm wondering how important it was for you to sort of go through the till fight and get the win and sort of if there were any lingering questions or loose ends that could only really be answered once you sort of come through a fight week and actually, you know, get the win to sort of solidify that whole process that you went through at the start of the year. Yeah, 100%. Um, the, 
the tilt fight was was more or less. I wouldn't say it's it's me coming to to a new me. It's it's just the doors opening to 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 myself. Just just being creative, enjoying the game, trying out new things, and just just opening it up again. And um, it's exactly as you said. From the till fight, I've I've taken a lot of a lot of you know, reassurances, confirmations that everything that I was doing, like as fun as it was, like you. You know, it would have been great to like to have a lot of fun, but then lose, and it would have sucked. So, mm. you, know? <laughs> you know, you can do a lot of things that are fun, but to, for me to enjoy the process, to to get to the fight, to come away with the win, is is just it just confirms a lot of things for me. And um, I don't know, it's 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 a big relief. It, it, it everything is just kind of confirmed to be on the right track right now. Mm. And all, obviously, a big fight. A lot of people looking forward to it. But a lot of people see this as a title eliminator. I mean, after a win over Jared Kennedy, how could you not get this rematch with uh, Israel Adesanya? How does it feel? To, I suppose there's a little bit of pressure there. But do you feel it at all going into this one? That, hey, this is the, the sort of the path to the next title shot? No, not really. No, not, 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 like, I just feel the pressures of it's another hard fight. You know, with another killer like mm-hmm. there's no additional pressure on it because whether it's this one or the next one or the one after that you just you just you win fights that's the secret to getting to the top is just you just want to win fights you just beat people in front of you and and you eventually get there mm, i i wonder as well because it's a, it, it's a tough process not being able to see your family and coming back and having to wait to see them but in a weird way is this whole fight island kind of an advantage to you in the sense that hey like you don't have to deal with some of the media obligations you don't have to deal with as many fans and it's kind of like you go in there you do your job and you get out there's a bit of a simplicity about it in a weird way yeah definitely i i it's exactly as you said it's the simplicity of it but also like the professionalism just the the structure of it it, it um i really it really agrees with my ocd <laughs> i'm gonna tell you right now like, <laughs> it, it, it agrees with me uh, with me really well like you just you go a little bit early you fly there quarantine testing warm up like you know what i mean it's all structured everything's structured there's nothing out of thing the media is done by the telephone or it's in like these certain rooms you just you hit them out and you go back to your room and there's nowhere to go it's i i really enjoy it to be honest like i really enjoy it and um yeah, and I, I guess like I'm very lucky to have been able to experience Fight Island because that it is something that even the even the people in the UFC, a lot of those guys aren't going to be able to experience Fight Island. It's such a unique experience, and uh, you know I, I really am. I consider myself blessed to to be able to you know to have the fortune that I've had. Yeah, for sure. Especially in times where people you know aren't working, not not having their jobs yeah. and stuff. It's yeah, bit ma- massive bonus. I just wonder how official is the Jared Cannonier fight, by the way, because uh, I know that it was kind of like reports were saying it's happening. UFC two fifty four. Is it mm. official? Or is it signed? Where, where exactly are we at? It's a, it's a, I guess it's as official as a, as any UFC fight is, right? Mm. Um, but like me and him have said, yeah, and I guess we're just waiting, just waiting to sign the dotted line, I guess, mm. for for all that, but. More or less, we're, we're pretty pretty set on it. Would you consider... Because I know Jared's expressed that he wants to be a backup for Paulo Costa and Israel Adesanya. And I also feel like, um, even if you have full confidence that both fighters are going to make it, with the pandemic, it's just like you, just, you never know what's going to happen, who's going to catch something. Would you be interested in being a backup potentially at UFC 253? Timeline-wise, <coughs> will it work for you? When is it? Uh, 19th? No, it was 19th September. They're thinking about moving it, I think, to the 26th. So actually, you would have barely over a month. You'd have like a month and a week. Yeah, not... probably not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> probably not. Like, I'll take the hard road. It's all good. Mm. I mean, it's a it's a fascinating matchup, the, the title fight. And a lot of people are sort of talking about the fact that, man, Polo Costa is just, you know, such a dangerous guy to fight, especially, you know, depending on what, what the octagon size is going to be. If it is in Fight Island, the octagon size will be a little bit bigger, so the fight should be a little bit different. But... I'm just wondering, do you have a preference if you did beat Jared Kananir? Is it a thing where you'd love to have another shot at Israel Adesanya and have that rematch and kind of go in there, you know, in a different mindset and sort of have another go at it and then get the title? Or is it a sense where you don't really care and if Polo Costa is the champ, same thing to you? Um, I, it, honestly, it's the same thing either way. But as a fighter and as someone who lost to, to Israel, I'd love to run that back. Because mm. I, I don't really like, doesn't sit well with me knowing that I lost to someone. Um, I don't think it does for any fighter. 
to be honest. So I'd love to run that back, but otherwise, it doesn't matter. You know, it, it's never mattered. We're fighters. We're in the game to fight people. Like, and and like uh, on top of like um, <clears throat> on top of we do it because we love it and stuff like that. And everyone has their different things. We do it. To, we get paid to do this. You know, this is this is our, our our contract. This is our job. This is what we do. And um, you, know, you put people in front of me. My job is to beat them, and I'm gonna do my best to do that. Mm. I love on Grange TV uh, the show that you used to do, where you used to sort of preview fights. I would love to just hear your thoughts quickly. How do you think that fight plays out between Costner and Adesanya? It's quite an interesting matchup. Yeah, um, it is. It is. I think, I think Adesanya has a skill set to beat him, to beat Costa. I think he ha- he does. I think he has the experience and the and the skills to to beat him, to edge away, and to pick him apart. The thing is, though, like like you mentioned much earlier, Costa is an X factor. His his physique, his strength, his power, his cardio, his chin, all of that is abnormal. So, you you put that in an octagon with anybody, and it's, it's hard. It's very hard to make to make picks. If I was a betting man, I'd lean towards Adesanya, but otherwise, it, it wouldn't be much. There wouldn't be much in it. Mm. And it's interesting, like the smaller cage plays a factor, although I think in Fight Island, it's 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 the big cage. Um, but I was going to say, we saw you speaking to the Sydney Morning Herald, and you said that you might tune in and watch the fight, depending on what you're doing that day and if you were busy or not, <laughs> which I found hilarious. And I was wondering, were you joking because you're just sick of people asking you about it? Or is that really sort of the way you approach, you know, big fights in your division where you're just like, I don't need to watch them live? Mate, mate I don't watch any fights, period. Wow. Why is <laughs> like, that? Because if I'm at my computer, I'd rather be playing something else. <laughs> I'd is rather there, be playing some video games. Or... Is there a fight that you remember, like any fight in the UFC that? What, what was the last one that actually excited you? Where you're like, oh, you know what? I really want to see now, this. There are there are a lot of fights that excite me, like this Stepe DC fight. I am excited for that fight. I would love to fight it, but I know me. I know that if I'm at my computer, <laughs> and I got some boys on, and the game's up, and I'm feeling the game. <laughs> <laughs> then I'm gonna to lean towards my game and just Instagram scroll the fight later. Um, Instagram but... scroll, not even the full thing. <laughs> oh, not, there's no way I'll watch it after the fact. Like, there's zero chance. If it's not live, I'm not watching it. Um, but like in saying that, if like I don't know, if I get real, uh, I don't know, if I get real itchy, sometimes I put it on the second stream. Sometimes Sophia wants to watch fights, so. And if my old man's here, I'll put it on the second screen for them to watch while I play my game. And then I start drifting off to the fight and then I'll watch the fight. <laughs> I love it. It's like, I'll watch the fights, but only to make other people happy. Like, yeah, <laughs> I, don't, I don't really care. That, that's, that's nice of you. We'll let you go in a sec, Rob. But I just wanted to ask, so if you do fight on uh, UFC 254, you'd be fighting on a Khabib undercard. And I know Khabib's a guy that you, you said that you've had a lot of respect for. I'm just wondering, how would it feel to sort of fight on a Khabib undercard? And also, what, what is it about Khabib that sort of, I guess you gravitate towards about his style? Is, is it a personal thing? Is it a fighter thing? What is it? Yeah, it's both. It's both with Khabib. I think Khabib is a, just, uh, he's, he's phenomenal. He, one, he's very respectful and honorable. I think he is a stand-up role model for the sport and for people uh, just alike. I think... I think that's how you should act, especially us as warriors going into battle. I think that's the respect and the honor you have to give your opponent. Um, so that's the first one. That's that's my thing. I think G- GSP did a good job of that as well. Um, and and there's, there are a lot of other fighters, but that that's along the same that the train I'm thinking of. Uh, and two, it's just Khabib's fighting prowess and and style, man. Like everyone knows what he's gonna do. Hmm. Everyone knows what he's gonna do, <laughs> and no one can stop him. And no one can stop. There's no secret. He doesn't come in. The, doesn't come into fights with new game plans. He doesn't come into fights. <laughs> it, it doesn't matter because he just he just knows that he's gonna he's gonna take you down and bash shit out of you. <laughs> and that's that's it. Every fight, same game plan, same layout. He knows. He knows. It's 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 amazing. It is amazing to have that sort of like that level of anything in the game. Like because there have been good, very high level guys in the game like across the history like there's been a lot of high level guys with those sort of skill sets where people know what they do and then they start to work them out and they start to counter them and then you see everyone switched onto it and then he then the guy can't quite get his game plan off anymore not with Khabib Khabib does it he makes it work no matter what and that is amazing amazing especially at the level that he's at I think that's amazing I would love to be on his undercard for two reasons one because I respect him 
and I think it's just just great to be on 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 a guy who I who I respect so highly to be on the same fight card, to be in the, the, the same event. And two, because I'm not the main event and I'm not fighting five rounds, I'm very happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll touch on that in a second. And also three, because you can see his fight live for, for, for once. But I was going to say, how do you even beat a guy like Khabib? Because um, I think it was Grange TV you were talking about, I think your theory was that you just don't see him ever losing. Mm. <clears throat> I don't see him losing. I don't see him losing ever. Like, <clears throat> like with 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 someone with that caliber and that that level of skill and that like that that overwhelming level gap. It's it. How do you beat him? Mm. You catch him. You can't catch him because he's got a chin made out of granite. <laughs> so you know what I mean? Like, it, it's like it, yeah, you'd have to catch him as he's diving forward with a flying knee. Like, and it has to be massive. And I'm pretty sure even while he's half out, he'll still shoot for a single and grab it. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, I, I just don't see it. I don't see it. Um, honestly, the, the only way I think you could beat Khabib is if you fought fire with fire. And that's if you tried wrestle, like out wrestling him. Like you took it to him in the wrestle. But how, how do you out wrestle Khabib when the level mm. gap's that huge? You know, I think that's the only way though is to just, just to spam wrestle him. It's the only way because it stops him being offensive. So you, you be offensive on him and mate, that's, that's hard. You got to turn it into like a five round wrestling match, mm, which I don't think Justin Gaethje is necessarily fond of doing. He likes to, he likes to have these crazy, exciting fights. Last yeah, one on Khabib. How, but, how do you see Justin faring against Khabib? Gaethje's got next level wrestling, but mm. you know, which is, which is why, like why he went through that period where he's just throwing bombs and I was like, He's so much better than that. He's so much better than that. He can mix it up so well with the best of them. He's such a good fighter. I think he's. I think he's like honestly. I think he's gonna. He's gonna give Khabib one of his toughest tests. I think Cage Gagey's gonna give him one of his toughest tests for sure. Mm, would it be fair to say that and there's a lot of people excited for a potential GSP Khabib fight for Khabib's final fight in the UFC? Would it be safe to say you're one of those people hoping you know maybe that one comes to two of your favorites and it done. Uh, not really, <laughs> because they're two of my favorites, right? I don't want to. Because you'll be cause, watching that one. Yeah, because like, no, probably not. But um, <laughs> but like, because because if those two guys fight, they're two of my favorites, right? And they're two of the most stand-up guys and honorable guys in the sport. If if those two guys fight, someone has to lose, and I don't want that for either one of them. Mm. You know. So um, I guess not, especially. As well as like the fact that just the, the, the chips are stacked against George at the moment because he's been out for so long and you know, different weight division and you know it's just it's just different it's just different but who knows maybe they make you know a billion bucks each from the fight which you set them up for life which they're already set up but I guess like why not mm. I don't know that would be nice just going back to what you said before about uh, you were relieved that it's not five rounds um, I almost thought you, you you just love these five round fights Rob you haven't had one <laughs> since uh, you haven't had a three rounder since I think 2017 when you fought Jacare yeah. what, would it, what is it that you like about these three rounders oh it's just it's just 10 minutes shorter <laughs> <laughs> I've been I've been preparing for 25 minute fights for a long time like even the camps that didn't come through I still prepare for five rounders it's just, it is a long time to fight the dynamic changes um, yeah, I can do fivers, but I think I'm suited for threes just because I'm explosive. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Rob, we appreciate your time, man. Lastly, as we wrap up, how do you see yourself, yourself winning it against Jared Cannon here at UFC 250 for the most important, I suppose, prediction of the whole chat? I think I put him out and get him out of there in round two. I think I'm going to be too much. I'm going to sting him too much. I'm going to touch him up. And then chips and dip afterwards, you and Jared? Mate, I burnt myself out on the last last two weeks. <laughs> Gonna have to f switch it up, mate. Gonna have to switch it up. Sorry, Jared. Find a new menu item. All right, follow the man on Instagram and Twitter at Robert Whitaker MMA versus Jared Kennedy at UFC 254. We hope. I mean, I think the UFC figure out the logistics, but as it stands, October 24th, it's going to be the 25th in Australia, New Zealand, because of the time difference. Rob, we could chat to you all day, man, but we know you've got a, a guitar lesson most likely after this, so we'll, we'll let you go, man. Thank you so much for your time. Always appreciate it. Thank you, lads. Appreciate it. It's always good to be on.